I hope St. Peter's listening. This report may one day help qualify me for that pass through the pearly gates. This case almost rushed me up there. This is another adventure of America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, Johnny Dollar. At insurance investigation, Johnny Dollar is just an expert. At making out his expense account, he is an absolute genius. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. This one's on the house. I wouldn't even bother itemizing it, except that the whole thing is probably tax deductible. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during my investigation of Bonnie Goodwin. Or, she was under 21, but that didn't mean she was involved with nothing but minor vices. Or, murder ain't minor. Expense account, item one. $12.40. Scotch whiskey and cigars consumed at the prize party arranged for me by one Mr. King Hart at my apartment in Hartford, Connecticut at 1.25 in the morning. Well, who are you? And which one of us is in the wrong apartment? Neither one of us. I'm King Hart. I came down from New York to see you. I hope you don't mind my helping myself to a cigar while I was waiting. Well, no, not at all. I'd even join you in a drink of my scotch, only I don't think I could squeeze it out of the cork. Uh, yes, I'll send you a case. In the morning, uh, and send you're me a copy of your pass key while you're at it. Maybe I can drop in on you sometime. Much. This verge is on the illegal. Let's not waste time trying to scare each other, huh? Let's talk business. What is your business? Well, that verges on the legal. That's why I need you. In your record, you're well enough known to do me some good. In mine, I'm too well known to do it myself. Do what? Find a girl for me. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm in the insurance business. So's the girl. She's a beneficiary of my insurance policy. This is a very unusual case. I was a sucker. The way that policy is written, I need her signature to do what I want to do. Change the beneficiary? Yeah. I'm all set to marry an honest dame. She's lovely. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Hart. I make it a habit to work for big insurance companies, not individuals. Sorry. How come? I can't look up your credit rating in Dun & Bradstreet. Look it up in this wallet. Go ahead. Don't be bashful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you're solvent. Corners of these bills look like a tally on a baseball scoreboard. One run on the first, and then three goose eggs. Help yourself. Ah, not so bad. Your money may be okay, but about your story. What about it? Look, there's any number of good licensed private detectives that you could have gone to. Philip Marlowe, Sam Spade, and Richard Diamond. And he would not only have solved your case, he would also sing you a song. Why did you come to me? I thought you had me straight. I don't like detectives. I'm allergic to coppers, pro or semi-pro, so's the girl. Look, Dollar, all, I have to, all you have to do is find the girl, get her signature on the form, and bring it back. Is that so tough? Yeah, my wisdom too still finds it a little tough to chew. I'd like to see the policy. Sure, I brought it with me. Here you are. Wow, this is a motive-sized policy. A hundred grand. How'd you ever get it, Mr. Hart? When I took it out, I was a haberdasher. Uh huh. Specializing, no doubt, in bulletproof vests styled by Hart, Shatner, and U.S. Steel. Oh yes, beneficiary Bonnie Goodwin. That's her. Well, before I can start looking, I should know where she stopped being around. Chicago. You'll find that and a lot of other stuff about her staples to the back of the policy. My, you're the very model of efficiency. I should be. As a model prisoner, I ran the accounting department at Leavenworth for five years. Thanks for not being bashful about your past. Makes it easy for me not to be bashful about asking you for something. What's that? My assignment in writing. I just don't want anybody to get the wrong idea about my association with you. That's okay. All right. You'll pay for the ticket. I guess I'm ready to take the ride. How much? A $3,000 retainer, and I'll bill you for my expenses. It's a deal. And don't hesitate to travel first class. Don't worry, Mr. Hart. Don't worry. Expense account, item two, $55.32. Plain fare, Hartford to Chicago. Expense account, item three, $4. Cab fare from airport to downtown. It takes about half as long to get from the Chicago airport to downtown as it does from Hartford to Chicago airport. I checked into the ambassador where I intended to live first class. 
And uh, expense account item four, a dollar twenty. Cab fare to the Muriel Arms, a female hostelry where I didn't expect to live, but which was Bonnie Goodman's last known address. Even at noon, it looked like a good place to start an investigation by either the police, the fire, or the sanitation department. Well, listen, Judge, you ain't got a thing on me. I stand my constitutional right. Yeah, why don't you give you an answer? 30 days. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Hello, Muriel Arms. I'm sorry, Miss Graham, let the know disturbed until 2.30. Uh, Hello, Muriel Arms. Call back after 2.30, please. Pardon me. Muriel Arms. No, she isn't. She'll be back in five days. Hey! Yes, sir. Where can I find the room clerk? That's me. Oh, good. I'm looking for a girl who used to live here. Her name's Goodwin. You remember? Oh, the little princess... Yeah, I remember. I'm trying to forget her. Well, I'm trying to find her. You know where she went from here? No, and I don't care. One of the girls said she saw her hanging around Emma's place. That's over on West Street. You'll hear it before you see it. I'm sorry, mister. That's all I got time for. These calls are piling up. Hello, Muriel Arms. (laughs) Say, uh, bartender... Where can I find Emma? I'm Emma. And no jokes. What do you want? I'm looking for a girl named Bonnie Goodwin. She ain't around. You told her she wasn't wanted around here. Well, that's your business. My business is to find her. Who are you? From the law? Well, from the law of averages. The insurance business. If you're selling insurance, you're going the right way. She needs some. Why don't you try to flag her apartments? Not only did the Flagler apartment fail to produce Bonnie Goodwin, but so did about 18 other wayward way stations scattered from the loop to the far north side. She was an easy girl to follow, but a hard girl to find. One of the things I learned along the trail was that Bonnie's heart was apparently no express train. It made a lot of local stops. And one of the things I was reminded of during the tedious search was a philosophy passed along to me by the tender age, by an old Pinkerton operator. He said... Being a detective is 90% late work, just like being a mailman with no address on the letters. Expense account, item five. 1495, shoe leather. My brogans and my nerve ends were worn to a frazzle by eight o'clock that night when I went sniffing up my latest lead, which took me to the desk of a tasty little flea bag on Dearborn. Oh, it felt like you were picking up the seven-year itch just walking into the lobby. Hiya, Sonny. Are you looking for somebody? Yeah. And if I don't find her soon, I think I'll just sit still and let her find me. One of your guests, Monty Goodwin. You know her? As much as I know any of them, I guess. Is she still here? No. Well, do you know where she is? No, all I know is she moved out of here. Because I asked her to this morning. Tell me, what makes this kid so popular? She makes me nervous. I don't like the people she brings around. You mean me, Grandma? Or do you mean you don't like her choice of friends? I didn't say they were friends. No, I'm through talking. Beat it. Now, wait a minute. I've got a friend. Now, listen, little boy. I'm awful good at not talking when I don't feel like it. And right now, I don't. Save yourself some time and get out of here. Okay. Now I know what was wrong with that little Red Riding Hood story. Grandma was the wolf. Boo! Oh, no. Hey, mister. Hmm? Hey. I... hey, I think I want to talk to you. No way, don't bother me. You were asking about Bonnie, weren't you? I'm a friend of hers. Oh? Well, where can we talk? Well, we... we better get away from this lobby window. Come on. Where are you headed? Out of town? Huh? Oh, oh, the suitcase? Mm-hmm. No, I just came back for the last night, too. Bonnie and I took an apartment today. Oh, your roommate, huh? Yeah. What do you want with her? Wait a minute. Huh? Can you think of any good reason why two men should be following you? Where? Don't turn around. Where can I meet you? You're not going to leave me. Just long enough to get where we're going. Where's a good place? The hangover house on North Park. Who do I ask for when I get there? What's your name? Jenny Page. Why can't I go with you? I want to find out who's being followed, you or me. Now, there's a hat stand. You take the first cab, yeah. I'll take the second. Bill and Darby take the third, and then we'll know. 
What did you find out? Oh, nothing, Janie. Those guys pitched me the biggest curve since Lefty Grove. What does that mean? Well, we took two cabs, so they took two cabs. One of them followed me, so it figures one of them followed you. Any idea why? Now, wait a minute, mister. First, I gotta get you straight. I just picked you up on a hunch, because you don't look like the other one. Who are you, and what do you want with Bonnie? My name is Johnny Dollar. My business, insurance. Insurance? Who's dead? King Hart? Did I hear a hopeful note in your voice, Janie? Well, is he? Look, in my business, I've learned never to give a definite answer to that question. But, as far as I know, he's still alive. He was when I saw him yesterday. He hired me to find Bonnie because he wants to get her name off his life insurance policy. As simple as that. That skunk. After what he put her through. You can file this question under N for none of my business, but uh, just what did he put her through? He built her way up and then he dragged her way down. And she's still too good for him, for anybody who works for him. I'm getting out of here. Maybe I told you too much about my business. Just enough. You're trying to help King Hart take away the only thing he left her. If I have my way, she'll never sign away the money from that insurance policy. Good night. This was the first chance I'd had all day to make anything happen. With a little luck, Janie Fage was going to finally bird dog me straight to the little chick who had flown so many coops, thus making herself so hard to find. As she started down the 60-foot length of the long, narrow bar toward the back door, I saw two familiar hulks launch out of their chairs up near the front door. They were after her, and too big for me, our opponents from that game of taxi tag. So I set about stopping them. I took advantage of the narrow room, the big crowd, and a little bitty drunk. I hated to do it, but I had to turn the bottle baby into a bottleneck. <coughs> I hope he was too numb to care. Hey, lay off the little guy! Hey, Come on, let me like through here. Get, get out of our way. We're coming through. If you like mob scenes, it was a great go-round when it lasted. But it only lasted 40 seconds. And then we got upstage by some off-scene action out in the back alley. The crowd went out to look. I didn't. Somehow I knew. My live lead had turned into a dead one. And the morning news flash over my hotel room radio read the funeral services over what little remained of my host. Guns roared on Chicago's north side again late last night when six slugs tore the life out of a 105-pound brunette in an alley shooting reminiscent of the early 30s. Listed at the city morgue as dead on arrival, the body was identified as that of 19-year-old Bonnie Goodwin, ex-girlfriend of the notorious hoodlum King Hart. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Johnny Dollar. But first, a burly sea captain, a fashion designer, a neurotic young gun collector, and a wealthy socialite. One of them very much dead. These are the elements Police Commissioner Bill Grant faces in his adventure on Call the Police tonight. Join Bill Grant for the thrills of the chase as he sets out to solve the case of the hero's funeral. And then take in Sam Spade's latest two-fisted adventure, Well Spiced with Wisecracks. Bill Grant of Call the Police and Sam Spade, like Johnny Dollar, are regular Sunday visitors on most of these same CBS stations. Now with our star, Charles Russell, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. In an alley shooting reminiscent of the early 30s, Listed as dead on arrival at the city morgue, the body was identified as that of 19-year-old Bonnie Goodwin, ex-girlfriend of the notorious hoodlum King Hart. And now for yesterday's baseball scores in the national... Spence account item six, 2250. Replacement of one hotel room radio, which I punched on the dial. After it had told me that the girl I'd been using as a bird dog the night before was really the bird. That I had spent an hour with Bonnie Goodwin, looking for Bonnie Goodwin. I agree, that isn't the proper way to turn off a radio, but the fight up to that time had been one-sided. I had to throw one punch even if the fight was all over. But then the bell rang, calling me out of my corner for another round. The bell on my telephone. Hello. Hello, Dollar? Yeah? This is King Hart. I just got in town at the airport. 
Well, 9 a.m., news travels fast. You got private lines to the major morgues of the country? A friend of mine told me last night, Joe Emma, what the devil happened, Dollar? I'm not sure, Hart. It could be that you used me for a leadoff man on a relay team. You hire me to find the girl, then hire some gummin to follow me. And when I find her, boom. Now, wait a minute, Dollar. From now on, it looks like you don't have to worry about who's going to collect on your insurance. Do you, by any chance, collect on hers? That's out of my line these days. And flying 800 miles just to be at the scene of the crime has never been one of my habits. I'm not so sure you just flew in, but I'm dead sure that I'm not on your payroll any longer. Dollar, listen to me. You listen. I didn't follow through last night because I didn't want to be picked up as a material witness. But first, I'm going out to prove a few things that'll keep me from being picked up, and then I'm going to make my report to the police. Aren't you telling the gun, Dollar? You know more about guns than I do. But I learned a lot about Bonnie Goodman while I was tracking her down yesterday. And one thing I learned, I like her kind better than I do yours. Wasn't anybody around to help her last night when she needed it. But I'll bet she had plenty of help making her first big mistake. Probably from you. Any morgue is a masterpiece of refrigeration. Just thinking of one can give me a real cold chill. When I walk into one, I feel an icicle forming on each separate vertebrae in my spine. And when I start walking out of one, I feel the ice begin to melt. You do yourself any good? Maybe. Thanks for letting me go through a thing. Here, buy some cigar. Oh, this I'll buy a box. It's a big dip. It should be. You've been a big help. I go into the morgue to find an address. And I found it. In the suitcase, monogram BG for Bonnie Goodwin. I also found that the body had been identified by her roommate. What do you want? I was a friend of Bonnie Goodwin's. I want to talk to you about her. You're no friend of hers. I knew them all. Leave me alone. There's nothing to talk about. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah. I have a pretty personal interest in it. Why? I was with her just before she walked into the alley. And uh, you might be interested to know that she was using your name. How do you know? You don't know my name. It's Janie Page. So you're packing. I might be unpacking. Uh, when you pack, you fold things on the bed. When you want, you put them on hangers as you take them out of the bag. Now, you know where you're going? You better close the door. Well? I don't have to be a quiz kid to figure out that you're leaving because you're scared. Probably running away from the same thing Bonnie didn't have a chance to run away from. I'd like to find out what it is. Bonnie didn't have any big brothers looking out for her. What's your angle? I'll break it down for you. About 10% of my interest is keeping myself from being implicated in what happened last night. The other 90% might get me a merit badge in a Boy Scout troop. I'm just trying to do my good deed for the day. I'd like to see somebody get paid off. Who's your candidate? King Hart? He's one of the people she was afraid of. Her little girl, she had a lot of people after her. Did she double-cross too much, talk too much, or just know too much? She knew too much. About what kind of thing? The kind of thing smart people stay away from. Wasn't she? Couldn't. For a girl being mixed up with the wrong people is an incurable disease. She just waited out. Mm-hmm. I see what you mean. You can't throw a bad reputation into reverse. You can uh, stand a compliment. You strike me as being a gal who might have a better chance than most of busting into this uh, unsmart set. I can't figure you out. What do you really want from me? What are you doing here? Who are you working for? I always feel sorry for these kids. Particularly the nicer ones. Oh, who knows? Maybe I'm just being selfish. Maybe this is a good chance for me to show off in front of heaven. I'd like to revise those percentages. From now on, let's call it 10% me, 10% Boy Scout, and 80% you. Well, now that I've cut you in for most of the profits, I'll get some help. I haven't got much to give you, but I think it was King Hart. Why? Is that insurance policy? That'd be one good reason. And the others? She brushed him. He wanted to marry her, but she brushed him. He, he was crazy jealous. King Hart claims he was in New York at the time of the shooting. If he can prove it, he's clear. But assuming that he did have some gun work to do in Chicago, who would he hire to do it? A guy named Joe Emma, for any, by any chance? Joe Emma? 
He'd be more interested in shooting King Hart. They split up over Bonnie Goodwin. Emma wouldn't leave her alone until after Hart got out of town. Is that enough reason for him to kill her? I don't know. I don't know how jealous he gets. There's only one other thing I'd like to know. What? How I'm going to help you. I want to do something more than just help you pack. Hey, how does this sound? You and Bonnie are about the same type, same build, same hair. Close enough to confuse anybody in the dark alley. Hey, what have you got going? If I could get a little story published on the first, first page of the evening paper, to the effect that the body in the morgue, originally identified as Bonnie Goodwin, is not Bonnie Goodwin, that it was identified in error and actually as you, Janie Page, I think we could sweat Bonnie's killer out in the open, trying to finish the job. Hey, what are you trying to do to me? I'll get killed. No, you won't, because you won't be waiting here for them. I will. <laughs> Expense account, item seven, five cents. Phone call to an old newspaper friend. Expense account, item eight, another nickel, one evening newspaper. Which proved to me the power of having old friends, and which I hope would prove to me the power of the press. The story, including the girl's address, was right above the weather report. And it looked like a fair night for Chicago, but a stormy night for me. I learned early in my career that when you're waiting in an apartment for the arrival of killers, don't just wait. I opened a window onto the street, made myself a pot of coffee, some sandwiches, sat down in an easy chair facing a door near the telephone, and had a picnic. For dessert, I had a sweet, rich idea which made me feel much better. When a little after ten, I heard a car pull up outside. When I heard footsteps coming up the hall 20 seconds later, I took the telephone out of its cradle, dialed one to get rid of the telltale tone of a line not in use. Come on in. It's unlocked. King Hart. Repeat, King Hart. What are you up to, Dollar? I'll tell you what I'm up to. At the other end of this phone line is a police lieutenant listening. He knows that you're here with me, so don't get rough. I don't care who's listening. Where is she? Who? You know who, Bunny. That body down some more than her. I wish I had this much luck fishing. People seem to bite easier. I suppose you're here because you missed her the first time. Don't be stupid. I'm trying to save her life. Where is she? She's sitting next to the lieutenant who's listening on this telephone. I don't believe it. Come on. You can talk to her. Okay. But you better be right. Here. Take the phone. Right over the head. Mr. King Hart in the living room closet, went back to the phone and really called the police to tell them that I had their man. I still had the phone in my hand when the apartment door opened, framing two masses of manhood, one of whom I knew. So this time, just to play safe, I said into the live phone, Joe Emma, Joe Emma and help her. Shut the door, Angie. Yeah. Well, if it ain't our insurance sales, who are you talking to with that telephone? Police. I just gave him your name. Hang it up. Okay. Pretty smart trick, Tyson. But I got news for you. What you just did ain't even evidence. But you ain't gonna be around to corroborate it. And we ain't gonna be here when the cops get here. Now, where is she? If you're looking for Bonnie Goodman, your search is narrowed down. You've got the whole rest of the world to look because she ain't here. Too smart. Now, where is she? Hiding in that closet there. The knob just moved. Oh? Huh? That's where you got. Okay, Angie, stay on this guy. I'll take care of Bonnie. On out, sweetheart. I'm coming, Joe! Why, you... <laughs> Joe Emma had expected the pleasure of kicking a girl around, but instead found himself being belted around by a man. Angie's right hand go for his armpit and not to scratch himself. Just as he snapped another shot at King Hart, I snapped a flying tag on him. Oh. Now you missed again, Angie, and it's all for you. Oh. Oh, congratulations, King. That's a delightful right hand you throw. Never mind that. Where's Bonnie? She's dead, Hart. I planted that newspaper story that she's still alive. I didn't read any newspaper story. I just came from the city morgue. The babe they got isn't Bonnie Goodwin. I never saw her before. Isn't Bonnie? Well, then why did... Oh. 
Emma kills her roommate in the dark alley by mistake. So Bonnie switches identities to make herself officially dead so she can live longer. Where is she? I want her back. I thought all you wanted was to get her name off that insurance policy. That isn't true. I wanted an insurance investigator to find her. What else could I tell you so you take the case? I want her back. You'll have to make up her own mind about that. Are you? I'm not playing Cupid. I'll tell you what I'll do. You tell me all the sweet, pretty things you want to say, and I'll repeat them to her. Expense account, item nine. $28.40. Dinner, while repeating all the sweet, pretty things King Hart had wanted to say to Bonnie Goodwin. And telling her all the unsweet, unpretty things I felt about his kind of guy. Don't worry, Johnny. I'm not going to him or anybody like him. Well, where are you going? Back to my hometown, I guess. Your hometown didn't seem to do a very good job of giving you a start the first time. How far from Chicago is it? It's only about 28 miles north of here. Yeah. Here's an envelope. But what's in it? You'd better buy yourself a tent. It'll take you about $3,000 worth west of here. Oh, Johnny, I... Thank you. <laughs> Expense account, item 10, 20 cents. Two beers, one for me and one for King Hart. I told him that his money was taking Bonnie on a little trip back to happiness. And he told me that if I ever expected to collect any expense money from him, I knew where I could go. Expense account total, $163.55. You'll notice that this is very low, but remember, I'm paying this one myself. Yours, very truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, directed today by Gordon T. Hughes, stars Charles Russell, with script by Paul Dudley and Gil Dowd. Featured in the cast were Georgia Ellis, Paul Dubov, Martha Wentworth, Lou Krugman, Gene Bates, and Larry Dobkin. The special music is written and conducted by Leith Stevens. Be sure to be with us at the same time next week when another unusual expense account is handed in by yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I'm in the mood for love. Isn't it a lovely day? That's what you think. Nope, that isn't just a mixed up sentence. That's just for the top hits you'll hear on your hit parade on parade tonight. Top hits from 1935. Without a word of warning, I'm on a seesaw. Yes, more hits dressed up in bright new 1949 arrangements and played and sung by the nation's top vocalists and musicians. Be sure to hear your hit parade on parade this evening in Jack Benny's time on all of these same CBS stations. This is Roy Rowan. Your hit parade on parade follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.